Hi everyone! So today in this episode we will be breaking city stereotypes. pre-corona times which is really crazy because I was here almost every or maybe not every month but every three months every two months that's for sure uh, and I was meeting with hoteliers going to fairs going to network events I'm here uh, pretty much I think for the first time since I'm a kid uh, only for a leisure as a tourist perspective so this is really interesting for me apparently Paris is set to be, I mean, their goal is to be the greenest city in Europe by 2030. Which actually really excites me because this is the last thing that you think of <laughs> uh, when you think of Paris. <laughs> if you have been ever to Paris, you, you always leave by saying, my god, it does smell in Paris. Which, to be fair, to my biggest surprise, Paris is not smelling bad. I wanted to start with Paris because it's actually a city that I have been traveling to the most, I think, in the past 3-4 years. And I have uh, seen a lot of stuff and, and I had so much crazy ideas as well, how to make it more sustainable for tourists or how to help in the process of just having less plastic waste and all of that jazz. So yes, yeah, so I just wanted to come and see what is up and what they're putting in place to make it the greenest city in Europe. <laughs> It is fantastic news because Paris is one huge touristic hub, so it goes without saying that it will have a huge impact on tourism. Might it be in transport, food logistics, common area, lifestyle, business activities, almost every inch of Paris is directly or indirectly influenced or affected by tourism. Since I arrived in Paris, the first thing I observe is that it doesn't smell bad. I am not sure if that's because there is wind or the temperature is not awfully hot or is it because there's less tourists or is it the initiative of keeping people out of urinating all around Paris actually working? So Paris has installed approximately 400 public toilets since 2006 which they call Sanizet. By Google definition, Sanizet are self-contained, self-cleaning, unisex public toilets in Paris. I checked a few of them myself. They're clean. However, when a smart ass leaves some waste in the cabin, well, it will stay there. But I still give a 7 on 10. I have seen way, way, way worse toilets and given that it is a city of 2 million habitants, with the influx going into the big 40 million tourists yearly, it is quite impressive. The next step that Paris undertook, which I took notice, is the amount of bike lines that have been created. Okay, right now in every city in Europe, you will find e-bikes and e-scooters at every corner ready to be used. But Paris is taking it to another level. Their goal is to make Paris 100% cyclable by 2026. Already 1,000 kilometers of bike line have been created across the city. Major roads have been shut off to traffic entirely. For tourists, there are already cycling routes created to discover Paris. I will link the website here below. Another very interesting fact is that by 2024, all the diesel cars will be banned from the city. By 2030, all the petrol cars will be banned from the city. Alright, let's say that the weather is very bad and you're too broke to be able to afford an electric car. RATP, which my guess in French is RATP, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering this one. And Ile-de-France Mobilité got your back. They are the first in Europe to have such a big flat of hybrid buses. They started to officially integrate hybrid buses on their flat in 2018, and today they have around 932 hybrid buses. They are super clean with air conditioning. I checked them myself. They will be keeping adding 500 every year till 2024. Nothing to do with any steps of Paris towards being the greenest city of 2030. Well, I mean, it doesn't have a direct impact. It has an indirect uh, impact. 
uh, there's a hot balloon in Paris that you can take. It goes just up and it goes down and you can have the whole view of Paris and what is great is that it checks the air at the same time. Anyways, I had to check it out. Alright guys, we're here at Citroën Park and this is the hot balloon. <laughs> ballon Generali is a tethered helium ballon used as an as a air quality awareness tool. That's, that's pretty much, that's the official term of this, of, use, of the usability of this balloon. And apparently this is what gives, uh, it's the thermometer, thermometer, how do you say thermometer? Therm thermometer? Thermometer? <laughs> this thermometer of like air quality of uh, Paris, which you can always check on the website of General, Gen it's called Ballon Generali. And um, believe it or not, but this costs only 14 euros. Or maybe believe it that it's really expensive or maybe not expensive. We'll see after the ride. So we are currently 150 meters. It's quite cool. Conclusion. If there's a long lineup, I will not do it. If there's a, there's no lineup, I will definitely do it. Because for the price and for the time and everything, uh, time efficiency, it's perfect. You go up and then you see everything in Paris. You go down after 15 minutes. It's chill. Now I just check on the website. It's a two hours and a half of waiting in line to go up with this balloon. For two hours and a half, it's not worth it, in my opinion. The next step that Paris is taking is growing plants on the rooftops of uh, buildings. Hey guys, so right now I'm au Porte, les Portes, no, pardon, uh, Le Perchoir des Portes de Versailles. And um, it's a really, really cool place that you definitely should check it out if you are into uh, agriculture. Um, it's one of the places that one of the 50 hectares of space that Paris has where uh, people are growing their own vegetables. Uh, this one is on the rooftop, so it's a pretty cool, chill ambience, like you can see. It's quite chill. So there was a study made by APOR, which stands for L'Atelier Parisien d'Urbanisme, which basically identified 80 hectares of uh, potential rooftops where Parisians can do some agriculture. Um, and then after, in 2016, the city of Paris decided to um, found an organization called Les Pariculteurs, if I'm saying this well, yeah, Paris, Les Pariculteurs, which it's an organization where it facilitates anything. If you want to have, for example, a wall or a rooftop or even a basement, uh, make some agriculture, uh, this is an organization that can help you out. So you can bid, send your a request, and they will look into that. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, so uh, since, that, since 2016, there's already 50 projects that have been um, developed. One of those are exactly where I am right now, here, which is, uh, eh mon dieu, Les, uh, Le Perchoir, Porte de Versailles. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so hopefully I can go around. I see there's some people, I'm not sure if I can get in. So, unfortunately, I did not see the gardens because <laughs> I'm not... I should have organized myself a little better. Um, apparently you have to reserve to be able to get in and to see the garden. It's not like you can just walk in like I thought and just look at the plants. So I haven't seen anything. I just could see from the from the coffee, from the restaurant, I could see it and that's it. So don't be like Agatha, reserve your spots before going anywhere. Uh, however, I got this 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 paper where it says exactly where to reserve your spots and uh with this QR code i think you can even get like a discount of two euros 
anyways, so um, I encourage you, if ever that's something that interests you, you should do it. There's actually a few of them in Paris and um, a lot of them have been closed because of Corona, but, but I have a feeling that perhaps uh, they will be open again very soon. All right, so we have seen we have seen the hot balloons, gardens, we have seen bike lines, we have seen buses, public toilets. But actually, to be sincerely honest with you, those are not really the reason why I'm doing this video. There's this one subject that really, really interests me. And this is what we're going to be talking now about. When I was traveling back in those days, <laughs> those pre-corona days, I was really trying to make it as sustainable as possible. So I was always, I always had my water bottle with me. I had my utensils. I was trying to do my own due diligence. And the problem with this is that after three days, that water bottle starts to sink. Stink, I'm sorry, stink, <laughs> stink. And my utensils, of course, they cannot be washed properly because I don't have stuff to wash them properly and I'm on a business trip I just cannot afford to have some stomach issue this is like the last 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 thing that I want to have as a problem by myself on a business trip so uh, guess what after two days I was ending up going and buying a water bottle and as well like the water out of the um, robinet seriously sometimes it really stinks so it just it was not so I was ending up all the time after, if I was staying for a longer time, I would be buying water bottles after three, four days, which was totally counterproductive of what I wanted to do or, or the goal that I wanted to achieve in the first place as bringing my water bottle with me. And the thing is, ah, you will say, oh, well, Agatha, just wash your water bottle. Well, it's not that easy because this sink in Paris are really small and you sometimes you cannot put your water bottle in it okay the one that I have right now is actually not showing my point because uh, you actually can wash it with it but all uh, sincerely like I will say 80% of the hotels that I have been in France my water bottle never fit inside of the robinet then after corona hit and I had got for first time in my life Netflix and I found this documentary of Zac Efron. Okay, bear with me. <laughs> I know, Zac Efron, like, Zac Efron is doing documentaries? Yes, actually he is. Uh, I don't know if he's still doing it. I don't have Netflix anymore. It was just for Corona time. But um, he, it's actually really interesting. You go. Sh you should go check it out. He has really cool subjects uh, on in his documentary. And one of it was about water in Paris. That definitely, actually this is the reason why I started to watch his documentary because I was like, wait a minute, what? So I started to watch this documentary and I realized that um, there's actually a new uh, um, modern water filtration center in Paris. And apparently there is the Fontaine d'eau, okay? All over the place in Paris. It's all over the place. And apparently there's an application about it where you can just check where the, is the next Fontaine d'eau. <laughs> Abreuvoir <laughs> in French Canadian. <laughs> so um, I was flabbergasted because I was like, how on earth? I did not know this. I was traveling there for three years and knowing this actually will have, I mean, yeah, it will not help uh, the washing water bottle situation, but at least I will have had like really cool water to drink. And it's like all with minerals and, 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 and everything. And I was just like, what? So I told myself that I'm gonna check it out for this trip if this really works. So I don't remember much. I just like, I'm putting myself in the shoe of a tourist that saw Zac Efron documentary and wants to get you wants to use the 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 fountain <laughs> Jesus, I don't know what's the word in English. I literally just blank. Water found. Ah, oh, it's water found. This thing. Yeah, let's do it. Without knowing the name of the app, I left the hotel room with my friend and hit the streets of Paris. I opened my Apple Store, click on the search bar, and wrote in English keywords like water fountains, water in Paris. Found nothing. Knowing friends, I should have known better. I searched for Eau à Paris and bingo, there it was. Probably listening to the documentary in English gave a false sense that it would be easy to find it in English. 
The fact that you need to know French to find this app is a huge boomer in my opinion. On the bright side, the app is very easy to use and funny enough is in English as well. When the app window opens, right away it shows you all the water fountains surrounding you and in Paris. And honestly, I was very impressed. Another reason for you to make use of this cool water system is that since 2010, there are also 17 water fountains with sparkling water, all for free. By making it available to everyone, the mayor of Paris hopes to fight against the plague of plastic bottles. My first feeling is that the app is not maintained anymore. All the water fountains are apparently closed. Well, let's find out. Hundred fontaine d'eau uh, across Paris. If you haven't learned yet what eau means, <laughs> it means water in French. You may learn some Polish and French words through my YouTube channel. You're welcome. And uh, yeah, and uh, Paris water contains uh, calcium, magnesium, sodium, bicarbonate, and mineral salt essential for your body and your health. I don't have my glasses, this is where I'm squeezing my eyes just so I can read my notes. <laughs> and then Lou de Paris has a team of 70 people. They have their own laboratory. Uh, they are doing, they analyze water every hour. And if it's not every hour, every few hours, um, it's really safe to drink. It tastes good. I tried it. Um, it's really, it doesn't smell like chlor or any things like that that usually I was smelling when I was uh, drinking water under the sink. Um, interesting fact is that it's the first public drinking water laboratory in France. I wanted to show you the website of Eau de Paris because it's so hype and good looking. So Paris style, but so much that there's no English version. <laughs> but bear with me as I found a better place to date with all the water fountains. This is definitely a more, way more updated map than the one that I was showing you on the app. So moral of the story, bring your own water bottle to Paris. Uh, if you're a hotelier working in Paris, it would be just so cool if you guys mentioned this to tourists. It just It's wild for me that no one mentioned that. Um, as well, if if ever there's a possibility for a, for a hotelier to wash the water bottles of their client or the cutlery, just it, it's it's better for even pairs because then you have less garbage left after your guests. I don't know, it's just an idea that I'm like bringing up. Um, just just some insight, you know. Just some we need to we need to find a solution to all of this. So that's. It's just about brainstorming all those ideas together and all those processes that we put in place for our common goal of leaving this planet a little bit better than we already got. Hi there! So if you have come along so far away in this video, thank you so much for your time. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and I'm totally aware that the first videos I'll be doing will be far from optimal. Bear with me as I figure out all this content creation jazz. Uh, but there's so much really, really cool stuff coming up. Um, and I'm very, very excited. Um, so yeah, again, if that kind of content interests you, don't forget to subscribe. That will mean everything to me. And um, again, thank you for being here.